What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to be putting color onto that neo-traditional tattoo. So if you have questions on how I do my shading and go over it with color, this is the video for you, especially if you're wanting to get into neo-traditional designs. If you're new to this channel, I'm Brandon from Tattooing 101, and make sure you like and subscribe down below if you're liking content like this. So let's get into finishing our neo-traditional tattoo. Okay, so let's get into it. So before we start, we're going to get our inks all laid out. And before pouring them, making sure that you shake every one up is super important. And what I like to do is set out my inks, how I'm going to be tattooing them. So I'm going to start out with my red, the furthest to the right. And I'm going to go in here and pour my green because that's going to be the next on my list of things I'm going to do. Okay, so now that we have our colors poured, we're going to get out our 11 curved mag. And checking our depth of our needle first before getting into the actual tattoo. I'm going to let my mag hang out a little bit further so I have more control getting into the areas that I want to. Alright, we're going to dip into our gray wash. So we're going to start out with this smoke. We don't want it to disappear on us, so what we're going to do is just get in here and just start on where all the shading for it is going to go. Sometimes I'll dip into my white then dip into my actual gray wash solution just to get a more of a gray tone instead of just a light gray. So doing it like that, mixing it right in the ink cap. Okay. Just starting off at the bottom and just working your way up. Just using this motion right here, just building up tones. You want to start out light, just barely touching the fake skin, and then you just slowly build up tones that way. Getting used to that, starting out your career, will help you out a ton in the future. When I'm tattooing, you'd see that I move my mag a lot, so I don't just keep it perfectly straight. If I'm trying to get in a couple different areas, I'm going to turn to the side so I could get more of an angle into the area I'm trying to tattoo. And you could do that with no problem, you just want to make sure that when you turn it to the side, you're not overworking that area because multiple needles are hitting the skin at once and it could cause a really bad cut in the actual skin, which causes a lot of trauma. Just going through here and building up these tones. You're sticking with that three drops of our gray wash. I like to use a really light gray wash for fake skins just because it always shows up darker in the skin. If this was an actual person, you know, I'd have three different gray wash set up. I'd have an eight, a six, and a three. But with fake skins, it always shows up and it's so much darker, so I just use a three. Mm-hmm. 
Once you get used to your pendulum shading, you could really get dramatic with being able to whip it out. So like, you know, just when you get comfortable with it, you could really get out there and make some really long shades. That's why it's always better to practice on another fake skin before getting into your actual tattoo that you're doing. Um, you could practice just really going dramatic with that. Okay, now that we're done with the actual smoke, mostly, we're going to get into shading the actual bottle. So one thing to think about whenever you are working with bottles, you got to think that there is a thickness to them. So it's not just a solid line going down and you don't want to shade clear up to that line. So you want to think that there is about a quarter inch gap where you would be able to see the glass and what's in the actual bottle. So whenever we're shading, we're just going to go about a half inch away from that line and then shade it that way. the tones in here. You don't want to do it too quickly or you'll end up going too dark starting out and then you ended up messing up your tattoo because you were just a little bit too quick with it. So take your time, go slow, and just build up the tones you want to over a slow period of time. So right here we're going to do the darkest shading where the actual rag would be going through the bottle, just showing that you'd be able to clearly see the rag through the bottle right here, but it would still be a little bit distorted. So just doing dark shading right there will show that you could see it through the bottle, 
but not hard lines so it's just a little extra dimension so we're going to dip in our black ink right here and do some of the dark shading in with this tattoo So I'm holding my mic to the side right there to kind of get a hard line to start out with right here. And like I said, you can do that without an issue. Just make sure that you're not really overworking the area. It'll just make a huge cut in the actual skin or fake skin. doing some shading in the actual rag right here which we're going to go back in with brown so you don't want to do it too dark because you want it to stand out from the actual bottle which is mostly grays so just doing a little bit of shading in here and then obviously the tip would be burnt so we're going to go back in here with our black and then just use small circles to be able to pack that black in there Using our Magtor Advantage, just turning it the specific ways you need to to create to get into those areas that are smaller. And then just whipping out that area so it has a transition from the black into grays. All right, let's get it all cleaned up now that we have all our gray shading done. Okay, now that we're done with the actual gray wash part of the design, we did the smoke, got all of the gray wash in the actual bottle done, we could go in with the colors. So the colors we're going to be using again is red, greens, browns, and yellows. So 
also have an end cap set up for white. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that here in a second. So whenever you are doing color, you want to make sure that you are using your machine and sometimes I like to use small circles for packing in color but I'll also kind of do the whipping method along with the pendulum shading method to get the blends that I need. I tend to mainly use the whip shade method with my color um, just because the way that I tattoo like neo-traditional traditional designs you know I'm just used to that so that's kind of how I tattoo but if you're more comfortable with the pendulum shading do what's comfortable for you and as always I tattoo very fast so if by chance you need to slow down the video or even pause it just to catch up to me so we could go through this tattoo together, by all means do that. So let's get into the actual color of this tattoo. Okay, so what we have set up first, remember I always set up everything in order in to in order to tattoo correctly, sorry about that. So I'm going to be starting out on the right side. We already did our black, so we're gonna go in with our reds. And what we're going to do is start out with the tips of these flames and I'm just going to whip some red color down. Now that we've done with our reds, we're going to get into our greens. Making sure you dip into your rinse cup every single time you're doing different colors. And the reason that I start with my darkest colors first, because if you start out with your yellow, then go in with your red. And when you go to white, if it smears into a lighter color, it's going to distort that color and muddy it up. And it's not going to turn out to be a great tattoo. So keep that in mind whenever you are using colors. You always want to start with your darkest colors first. So with my greens, I'm going to go back and forth between these two colors um, to get the effect that I'm looking for. So what I did right there, you could see that I left kind of a circle pattern right here. I went really dark right here and then kind of faded into there. So what that's going to do is showing a light circle um, right there. So it looks like the light's reflecting off the top of the liquid inside. That's one thing you could do to create texture and just to add some extra de definition in your tattoos that you do. Mm-hmm. 
So, the reason I go back and forth dipping in between these different colors is to create different colors and blends in my actual tube. So I'm blending the colors in the actual tube instead of blending them in an actual ink cap. So going back and forth, I can create different colors with the two colors that I've set out. Creating different tones and more transitions between everything. One thing when you're working on color, you want to make sure that you're still leaving areas um, showing the skin tone underneath. What that does is create more depth and also kind of leave some spaces breaking up all the color. Okay, we're gonna go back with the seven round liner that we cleaned out really good the last time we tattooed with it. We're gonna dip into this green right here. And we're just gonna add some bubbles. I'm just doing some light whip shading in the middle of this bubble right here, just going back and forth, just building up a little bit of dimension like the light shining off of it. We're not going to go too much with it. We don't want to perfectly fill it in. this off really good okay so now we're gonna get into our brown color gonna dip in our water just to clean out our cartridges again wiping off all the water so there's no water stuck in it or that'll make our colors distorted then dipping into our brown color we're gonna get in here and use our brown to shade this rag in What I'm going to do now is kind of go back and forth between the white and the brown to create some different tones. I'll show you how I do that now. After I get this bottom part done right here. Thank you. 
So now we're going to dip into our white, then just quickly dip into our brown. What that's going to do is mix the color in the actual tube like we just did with the green. And create some lighter tones in there. colors are yellows and what we're going to do is the same thing mixing colors in the tube um, that's a great thing to learn whenever you are learning how to tattoo um, we're going to do this to create orange too with just red and yellow one thing we're going to do before that i'm going to dip into my brown and i think i want a couple more super dark browns in there so what i'm going to do is dip into my black dip into my brown again and mix it in the tube like we have been doing just going through here and just whipping out some dark shades of brown in here. Yeah, that's the effect I want to get. I just didn't want that brown to be too powerful in the tattoo. Okay, now we're going to clean out our cartridge in the water again. Now we're going to get into our yellow. yellow you want to get used to being able to put it into the skin or the fake skin in one shot you don't want to have to go back to it multiple times especially if you're just like packing it in there because it's a really easy color to overwork so get used to you know putting it in there in one shot and not having to go back unless you are like slowly building up colors like this you know I'm just lightly touching the skin I'm not overworking anything you could slowly build up colors of yellow doing it this way um, but if you are like you know really saturating it doing small circles you don't want to have to go back into it or it could really tear up the skin Mm-hmm. 
Okay, now we're going to dip into our red very quickly, building up some red colors in there and dipping it in our yellow. That'll mix and make an orange. And normally you'd want to do your yellow last, but I'm trying to get some really clean transitions and get everything to flow correct together. So what I do is go in there with the orange just to get it to flow into the yellow because I'm mixing straight in the tube, which you could get away with. Now that we're done with the color, I want to show you how I create extra detail and extra texture when it comes to tattoos that I'm doing. And what I do after the tattoo is done, I'll go back in with my liner and do little pieces, um, little extra shading in a couple of areas just to show extra dimension in my tattoos. This also helps with black and gray, color tattoos, anything that you're doing. If you could go above and beyond every time that you are tattooing something just to show extra dimension or give it a little bit more of something, it's going to make your tattoos pop that much more. First of all, we're gonna make sure we dip our 11 round liner into our water to make sure that it is completely cleaned out. Okay, and we're going to go back through here, we're going to dip into our red and just go and make some tiny circles in with this design. What that does is give the effect that there's like little sparkles, you know when there's a fire or you're having a campfire and that little dots that come off the fire, that's what we're doing right here, just adding that dimension to the actual tattoo, which makes it look awesome as you can see so just something as simple as that can give you know an extra dimension to your tattoos that you are doing now we're going to go through here I'm going to show you how to create light sources in with your tattoos so this is a glass bottle so with the flames being that close to it you would be able to see some of the light reflecting off the bottle so what I'm going to do here this would be my highlight areas right here on the around the edge of the bottle so where it would reflect off the light, I'm just going to go back here with my liner and just do some areas 
shaded in to where it would be reflecting off the actual light. Even some right here. Okay, dipping back into our water. Now let's dip into our white. Now we're going to work on our actual highlights. Highlights are important with a tattoo just because it could give you the extra colors that you need to create a really great tattoo. So just going through here and you don't want to overdo highlights. It could really take away from a tattoo if you do too much. So just in some of the areas that you want to stand out, we're just going back in and adding some white areas to it. And now that the tattoo is done, I think I'm going to add some letters into the tag. I think I'm going to do boom, like B-O-O-M. Um, you don't have to do this to your design. I just wanted to add it in there just because it looks a little empty right there. So we'll go through here and just... Boom. All right, so now we're going to clean it up really good. If you have found this video helpful and want more content like this, I highly recommend you pick up our 10-day seminar and I'll leave a link down below just for you.